Hi, this is the first in a series of tutorials that deal with the plan rendering techniques uh, that we're doing for exercise three. So you can see here, this is the uh, kind of where we're going with the final product. Yours may not look exactly like this, but uh, it gives you an idea what's going on. And this first uh, step in the, tu the first tutorial that I'm going to do uh, now is really relating to setting up the layers. We want to set up the layers. That's kind of the first step. Second step is we're going to fill those layers and create a color scheme. And I can show you what that means over here. If I turn my color layers off and turn on my color scheme layer, basically we want to fill each of these elements, different types of trees, paving, buildings with their basic color. Uh, and even in this case, I don't even have shading on the building. So I'm just picking a basic tone, although you could do it with shading. As you see, I do have a gradient on the swimming pool color there, and I could put a gradient on the water. But this allows me to kind of study the basic combination of colors that I want to use and see whether they work, create enough contrast, draw emphasis to where I want to draw emphasis. Once I know I've kind of got that composition taken care of, then I can go on to the business of adding shading and textures and highlight colors and all those kinds of things. But it's always good to start with this because it's really easy to make adjustments now and, and, and it's a little more complicated to make them later, although we can make adjustments at any time. Okay, so that's where we're going to go. We want to set up the layers needed for this create a color scheme, and then ultimately finish that color with color scheme with shading, texture, uh, custom patterns using filters, freehand line work, whatever we need, and then we'll end up adding in shadows at the very end to uh, help bring things alive. Okay, so that's where we're gonna go right now. So I'm gonna switch over to our base drawing. So this is the drawing provided uh, for the exercise. And it's in black and white. And you can see here, I, I do have a color layer group set up, but there's nothing in it. Now, one of the things I want you to notice is the black and white drawing layer group is on top and it's set to multiply. And that means that as we add color layers below, they will uh, appear as though the lines are over top of them and the colors will show through uh, exactly as they're supposed to be. And the second thing I want you to make note of is we don't put any color on these layers. So I um, could lock this layer group. <coughs> that may cause some issues with selections, but uh, it's one of the things you could do eventually. We will use in the next tutorial, I'll show you how we can use these to make selections. We're not gonna deal with that right now. Uh, I'll talk more about that in the next one. So for right now, what we need to do is set up a series of layer groups for the color that we're going to apply to this drawing. And the easiest way to do that is to, we can open this up. Let's just create, uh, well, if I had that selected, we'll drop in there. Let's create a couple layers in there and we'll call this one base uh, because what we're going to do is for every element, we're going to add a solid base color that's opaque and uniform. Then on a layer above that, we'll call that texture. And we may end up adding another layer or two for other highlights that are of, of a different hue. But for right now, this is our core structure. For every element, the large trees, we're going to have a base color and a texture color. So I'll select those two, choose new group from layers, and I'll just call that large trees. Okay. And since the other thing I can also do, well, I'll make a few of these and then we'll combine these. So since I have this set up, all I really need to do now is right click on this, say duplicate group, and I can call this medium trees. And then I want to move that below. So I'll move it till I see a line because the large trees will cover up the medium trees, which will cover up the evergreen trees, which will cover up the shrubs, etc. So we need to have them in the proper stacking order to make the colors appear correctly. We, you don't need to set any of these layers to be semi-transparent. If you can't see the line work or you can't see, or you're seeing colors through other layers, it means you've probably changed the opacity and we don't need to do that. These all stay 100% opaque and we just need to get them in the right order. So let's duplicate that again. We'll call these evergreen trees. Again, we can move these around later, but I'll just keep moving them down. Oh, now, if you did what I just did, I just dropped that in the medium trees. You just have to drag that out, put it aligned there, make sure it's closed. Again, if you drag it with, and you see the little bounding rectangle, it's going inside. If you drag it below, it'll go below. Okay, we'll duplicate that. Uh, we'll call these 
large shrubs. And I'll just keep doing this and we'll move them around later. Duplicate group, small shrubs. So we've got large trees, medium trees, evergreen trees, large shrubs, small shrubs. And I think that's all the kind of woody plants that are here. So I will finish arranging these large shrubs next, small shrubs last. So now I've got all these. I will click on that top layer, shift click on the bottom and choose new group from layers. And we'll call this plants. Okay, so I'm starting to create some hierarchy automatically, which is a good thing. Uh, and then inside of that, I could either in this layer or on another layer. And I think I'll make it another layer group just because that way we can keep the stacking order the way we want it. We'll call this ground plane. And we can do this a couple ways. Let's, let's call it ground cover with two words. Okay, and I want this to be not in the plants layer, but in the color layers. I want that just below there. There we go. So when I close this, everything disappears. So I've got plants, ground cover. Within the ground cover, I'll drag that in there. So the ground cover is the soft surfaces on the ground plane. And basically, I've got this area around in what I'm going to call planting beds. It's around the buildings. It's kind of the forest floor. And then this area, which is the marsh grass. So I'm just going to call it, call this planting beds. Another one, call that marsh grass. OK, I think that's it. So in this case, I'm not going to create layer groups because I only have two things inside that layer. Plants are more complicated, so I split those up into separate uh, layer groups. OK, now since I've got this one, I'm just going to right click on that and duplicate that group. And let's call this hard surfaces. And I'll move that down below here as well. And I've got these couple layers. So hard surfaces, I have the uh, dock and decking. And that's this area. This is a floating dock that comes up here. And this is kind of a deck area that's attached to it. And also that can include this as a boat, uh, like rowboat, canoe, kayak storage uh, rack here that's all made of wood. So I've got dock and decking. Then I've got the paving around the pool area, which is special paving. Call that pool paving. Create another layer in here. I've also got the roads. So the order of these doesn't really matter in this case, but I've got the road area. Um, and I think that's it. Then there are some other decks. These are uh, cottage units, buildings. So there are decks, but I'm going to put those in a layer group with the building since it relates to that. It's not really part of the general ground surface outside the, the architecture. OK, so we've got hard surfaces. And let's just duplicate that group. And let's call this buildings. And I'm actually going to move the buildings between the plants and the ground cover because it's going to be higher than this, but lower than the plants. The plants go over top of the buildings. Well, that might not be completely true of the, of the shrubs, but the shrubs are all outside the building, so it, it'll work for us. And I'm going to come in here and call this light side and shaded side. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because on these buildings, you can see the texture here. If we zoom in a little bit. This is a little darker. This is a little lighter texture. The sun's coming from the upper left to the lower right. So this surface, this surface, and this surface will all be a lighter t a tone of whatever color I'm using for this. And this one, and this one, and this one will be a darker tone. And I'm going to put those on two separate layers so I can make adjustments to them separately if I need to adjust the brightness or the uh, the, the contrast on either of those elements. 
So I've got those two. And since they're kind of related, and then maybe the other thing I'm going to add right there, let's do it with this one, is uh, dex. And that, as I said, are these little back decks and entry decks. The, these are units are raised up off the ground. This is an island setting. And so they're on pilings so that if it floods, the water goes underneath the unit. It doesn't do any damage to the interior. So you have to walk up a series of steps, a little switch back. Kind of you come out of the driveway here, up, over, and up. Okay. Now, since these all relate to um, the building itself, I don't. I could split these if I really wanted to be organized. I could, I may, I could take those two new group from layers and just call that roof. So I could do that if I wanted to keep that organized. Again, that way, the nice thing is if I have them grouped and I decide I want to turn the color of the roof off, I only have to click on one icon to turn off both the light and the dark areas. So I think that's probably a wise thing to do. Okay, so we've got plants, uh, woody plants. We've got the buildings including the deck. We've got the ground cover and the hard surfaces. And I think we have only a couple more things. So we've got, I'll just duplicate this. Let's call this transportation. Okay, so that's gonna be above the hard surfaces. And inside there, I'm going to have cars. I have some scale cars. And we're going to have boats because there's one boat in this composition already, and you're going to have to add some other boats in there. So this one I don't need. I'll just delete that out of there. And then finally, I think the only other um, the only other thing we have is water. This is uh, as I, this is Inlet Cove on Kiwa Island, and this is the Kiwa River flowing along here. So this isn't a beach, but it, it is a, a tidal river. And then we have the swimming pool over here. And I'll probably just put those, oh, it doesn't really matter in this case. I'll keep that below the ground cover. So if there's anything on, I want to go over the water, I can. And so again, in here, we're going to do Kiowa River. Full paving, we'll just change that to pool and we'll delete that one. So I think those are your basic categories and they should relate somewhat to what we have up here, transportation, planning, textures and ground plane. A little different because the black and white drawing can be a little more consolidated. A lot of those ground plane lines are on exactly the same surface. So that's what you need to set up for this first one and uh, I'll close this tutorial. You can get this set up and then once you've got all these layers set up, and remember, keep them in the color folder that's below the black and white drawing layer. Uh, the next tutorial, we'll talk about how to start uh, filling in those different elements. We'll use these layers down here to create our first general basic color scheme.